Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rob Sutton. Today we're talking about camera lenses, specifically the ones I picked for the Sony a7 III when I made this switch from the Canon 5D Mark III. Everyone's gonna have different opinions on this, so I figured I'd just go through my selection and tell you why I picked them, and we'll take it from there. Let's get started. First off, let's just recap a little bit of why I chose the a7 III versus maybe the 5D Mark IV or waiting to see what Canon would do with mirrorless, which I think is still gonna be a long way off. I loved my 5D Mark III. I used that camera for a really long time. So before I sold the 5D Mark III, I had a pretty good selection of lenses. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen them. It's the Sigma Art 51.4, the Canon 70-200 2.8 IS2, and the 17-40 F4 L lens. While it was a great complement of lenses, it was a lot to lug around. The total weight of that package came out to 8.28 pounds. So at almost eight and a half pounds, you can imagine that was a lot to lug around. Now, why didn't I just go and buy the 5D Mark IV? Well, it didn't have the video features I wanted. It didn't have, while the dual pixel autofocus is great on the 5D Mark IV, when Sony released the a7 III at $2,000, I was getting a lot more for my money in a lot lighter package, which I'd been looking at doing for a while. And obviously Canon is not releasing anything on the mirrorless market anytime soon. So when Sony released the a7 III at $2,000, I went ahead, put all my Canon stuff on the market and made the jump. Ironically enough, after it was all said and done and I sold all my stuff back, it really didn't cost me all that much money for the Switch, considering that the 5D Mark IV would have set me back $3,200 versus the a7 III's $2,000 retail price. So when it came down to it, I needed to find some lenses. What I really didn't want to do with this setup is make it ultra heavy like I did with the Canon setup. I was finding I was taking it less places because I just couldn't handle the weight all the time. It was just too much. So what did I do? I wanted to cover that same range I was using with the Canon because it really worked out in my applications well. I primarily shoot automotive photography, my family, and some landscapes. Since I travel a lot, it's really important for me to have it lightweight too, as I'd gotten too heavy with my other setup. I went with the Sony Zeiss lens, the 16 to 40 F4, the 70 to 200 F4 G series lens from Sony, and the fantastic plastic 50.18 Sony lens. Know what you're thinking? Since I went F4, especially on that 70 to 200, I could have done the exact same thing with Canon and got similar results. However, the body on the Sony a7 III is actually an inch shorter and three quarters of an inch narrower. That helps a lot in smaller camera bag. Even if I went with the 70 to 200 F4 from Canon, I still would be a half pound heavier with the greater bulk. When it came down to it, when I made this switch from the setup I had, I dropped three and a half pounds out of my camera bag. That's significant when you're hiking or you're carrying luggage. Every little bit of weight matters and three and a half pounds is significant. It's so much that when I packed up my camera bag for the first time with all three lenses in the body, it almost felt like I was missing something. There was a full lens or full something missing out of the bag. And it was a great feeling to have because it was a lot less weight on my shoulders and I was able to carry it around more. The smaller body also makes it so that I could take it into more places like into restaurants and do other street photography that looks a little bit more inconspicuous instead of holding a big camera body. So let's go into why I picked each of these lenses. One, the 70 to 200 F4. Everyone should have a telephoto. Even if I don't take this lens with me all the time, it is still incredibly useful and I use it for all of my automotive shots that I need to go long on, any landscapes that you wanna get details, and any sports photography. This includes my son's baseball, racing events, and anything else that I need to get that reach. I went with the F4 because I rarely use 2.8 on these lenses and I really wanted to save the weight. The actual body of the lens is much smaller too, so it fits better in smaller camera bags. I just didn't find myself using 2.8 enough on the Canon lens to justify the extra price, weight, and portability. Then comes the fantastic plastic, the 51.8. I just did a video on this, on how it's a great B-roll lens, especially if you don't mind the little bit of noise you get from the focusing. If you're gonna be doing background music or you're talking over it, it really doesn't matter. The great thing about this is how small it is, especially when you put it on the a7 III body, it's very tiny. I can take this into restaurants and I don't feel like I'm being evasive or have something huge laying on the table like I did with my previous setup. That said, I loved that 50.14 Sigma lens, and I probably will get another one of those art lenses for the a7 III, probably in the 35 or 85 variant, 
just because I already have this 50 and I don't want to overlap lenses. But that Sigma Art Lens was one of the best primes I've ever had on any of my cameras and I will end up with another one of those big heavy primes at some point in time. The lens I went with was this 16 to 35 f4 that I'm shooting with right now on the a7 III. I needed a super wide but I needed one that took filters. That 12 to 24 has almost like a fish eye lens on it and you can't use just regular screw on filters with that setup so i really needed something that when i'm shooting automotive photography or landscapes i could polarize neutral density filters or anything along that nature so that i had more versatility with the lens i do love the way that that super wide 12 looks but for my purposes I needed that 16 to 35. So, so far from my Canon 5D Mark III that I've been using for years to the switch to the Sony a7 III, about the biggest issue I have right now is I do feel like I have two left hands. Going from Canon for so long, everything was so second nature and now Sony, everything's in a different place. That said, I am starting to get used to it and the benefits of this camera are far outweighing the little bit of a learning curve that I had to deal with with Canon. Mirrorless setup is great for run and gun shooting with fast burst speeds. The video features, eye autofocus, everything is so much better on this a7 III than it was the 5D Mark III. Of course, I am comparing this camera to a previous generation Canon, but everything that I can see from using the 5D Mark IV, this Sony is still packing a whole lot more features for a lot less money. The dynamic range on this camera is ridiculous. We actually just came back from New Jersey where I used this camera indoors, no flash, for my wife's grandmother's 95th birthday party. And the amount of detail you could pull out of shadows with zero noise is unbelievable. I was even shooting inside of a restaurant a couple weeks ago at 10,000 ISO. My mind was blown. There was very little noise, very sharp picture and I just couldn't get that out of the Canon and I still have not even been able to get that out of a Canon 5D Mark IV the several times I've used it. Sony has really nailed the dynamic range on this camera and I am finding that I'm bringing this a lot more places with me with the smaller form factor, which was very important to me. Even though I'm missing some of the wider aperture ranges you would get with the G Master lenses, right now I'm not willing to give up that weight and portability to get the wider aperture. That might change over time, but for right now, I'm incredibly happy with this setup. It has come with me everywhere, and each day I get more adapted to the Sony form and factor. So guys, there you have it. There's my three lens setup. It really works well for what I shoot, especially when it comes to automotive photography and stuff with my family. Like I said, I probably will end up with a Sigma art lens at some point in time. But for right now, this setup is extremely portable. It fits in smaller camera bags and I'm able to take it just about anywhere we go without feeling like it's really holding me down. The only thing I have left to pick up at this point in time is one of the Sony RX100 Mark V's or Mark VI's. The only real purpose in that is to have a secondary camera for video and because we're going to Disney here in a couple of months and when it comes to riding rides and everything, I don't wanna worry about the a7 III. I'd rather just have a small pocket camera for that, for that purpose. And as of right now, I think I'm leaning towards the Mark V because I don't need the super zoom and I'd rather have the 1A aperture. But that will come up here in just a little bit and I'll do another video on that when I get that in. I will link all of the lenses and all the equipment I used in the description below, so be sure to check that out. I also will be doing some review follow-up videos on the specific lenses and what I like and dislike about them, so be sure to subscribe. So hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell so that you actually get the notification for it so you can see those videos and any other videos that we publish here on my channel. And until then, on to the next one. See ya.